Hey, it's all with another episode of Warcraft Weekly, and we are, like, we are so, so excited for the patch, I, I think. If you could be so kind as to hit the like button and subscribe for more World of Warcraft content, and... Okay, let's try this again. Here's the part where, you know, you're supposed to get all hyped up for the patch, which releases next week. This is it, folks. Next week, at last, Patch 925 is coming with new quests for Blood Elves and Dark Iron Dwarves, renowned boosts, and social contract that will 100% fix the world of war. There's obviously more to this patch than just that, but that's where some people are a little bit confused, and rightfully so, because this is an unusual patch. It includes stuff like Season 4 content that we're not going to see until, according to their announcement, late summer, which can technically be as late as September. Anyway, the patch. A lot of what's coming, the quests and the quality of life fixes, they're pretty minor. So for a lot of players, this patch is going to have just a few hours worth of content and then, well, they're back to waiting for Season 4 or for Dragonflight. The rumor mill is flying though, thanks to small clues pointing at, well, hidden stuff, additional character customization options maybe, specifically the kind that emulates the look of a dark rangers. Also, game files included with this build include what look like Drakthir spell animations, which really, really could be anything. It could be a pre-order toy, like a Hearthstone effect, or maybe the Drakthir will make some, you know, some cameo appearance before Dragonflight, which would make for some interesting speculation as to when the Titanic Keepers woke up and why. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this patch. Oh right, cross-faction. Patch 925, by all accounts a minor patch, just so happens to let players group for instance content across the factions, but fall short of doing away with the faction divide entirely. Developers cited not just the culture clash from I guess desegregating the players, but also the technical hurdles that come from tearing the old system down, which I'll talk more about in a bit. And yet, for many players still, they thought that this day would never ever come. The day when Horde and Alliance players could party and raid and wipe side by side. And this can't be understated. It was only a few years ago when the WoW team described the faction divide as this unbreakable pillar, the foundation of the Warcraft franchise. Folks like me who pushed for ending the faction divide, well, we were laughed at. This ain't world of peacecraft, man. Orcs don't belong in Stormwind, although elves do. Bring us the elves. Bring us the high. Hi elves, please. And two years later, we're about to see that divide start to dissolve. We're seeing that foundation reshaping. We're getting slow walked into a different culture in World of Warcraft, I think, where we can still celebrate our faction identity, but our race of choice is no longer a hard barrier between who we can play and interact with. So welcome, WoW players, to modern MMOs. The transition is one of numerous reasons why World of Warcraft is going to push this social contract agreement thing. Now, before I bloviate, folks, I want to point out that after this coming Tuesday or Wednesday or so, we're probably never going to hear a peep about the social contract again until it gets updated just like the Eula, I mean, people are going to throw a fit for a day and then all will be quiet. That's basically what's going to happen. Anyway, thanks to 925, players from opposite races will inevitably run into each other for the sake of pugging, and there are those who are going to not like each other simply because of the race that they chose. That's what the WoW team has fostered over the past 18 years, so it's going to be kind of hard for some to get over that. Some hail this reminder contract as the WoW team making a stand. Yay. Others say, boo, it's just a soft reminder and it doesn't go far enough, although the loudest voice is by far, have totally railed on it. How dare they attack my First Amendment right to personally attack you without repercussions? I'm offended that I can't offend people. Some have shared concerns that this contract is part of some new draconian system that forces us to be nice and kind and friendly, ill. But let's take a closer look at what's going on. Let's look at the actual reporting options in 9.2.5. There are several ways to report, and this is what's being updated. One is via chat window. Right-click reporting on someone's name in the chat window lets you report their name, if they're spamming, if they're advertising, and if they say something inappropriate in chat-like language. And this is nothing new. If you right-click report on a player's portrait, you see different options. You can still report their name, woohoo, but also for so-called cheating. Are they hacking? Are they botting? You can report gameplay sabotage. Are they AFK? Are they feeding, you know, the opposite faction in PvP? Or are they blocking progress? Now. This is not perfect. Like, anything on the internet, it's open for abuse from bad actors, but I don't see no button that says, 
ooh, someone's not being nice to me, or someone's not following the sacred social contract. Now, if you are concerned over the effectiveness or the ineffectiveness of these changes, that's totally fair. If you feel like you're being silenced or you're gonna quit because you won't hit that accept button, I advise that you say so in the comments because, well, there are people concerned about the effectiveness or the ineffectiveness of these changes and you seeing something will make them feel better that it's actually working. In the face of WoW forever changing, there's a question worth asking though. Is 925 actually ready? Early this week, a release candidate was deployed on the PTR, an obvious indicator that the patch should be ready to go with some room for fixes throughout the week. Thanks to testing from folks like Mr. GM, yeah, apparently there's room for fixes as he identified some minor bugs that allowed cross-faction grouping where it shouldn't, even cross-faction guilds after doing some finagling. Now, speaking from my limited and dated expertise these days, these bugs are great for getting attention and they ought to be fixed and some of them are. But for the most part, the impact of these bugs are nothing that would actually stop the patch from going live next week thanks to hotfixes. Still, with social media and its power to amplify pretty much anything to be a bigger deal than it actually is, the question's going to be asked, is this thing ready? I'd incorrectly predicted a late June release. I assumed that all of the Season 4 content would be finalized and crammed into the patch when the intention to kind of release it all when the time comes. One of the notable things we have not heard about since April was adding gray and common items to the transmog system. The WoW team did say that this would be in by Dragonflight, but, quote, possibly before. I think I can successfully argue that adding this would add another, well, another big dimension of content to those of us who are interested in expanding our transmog collections and would have a fun thing to do while we wait for Dragonflight. I try to mention that outside of the big three, there isn't a whole lot going on for solo players at the moment outside of Covenant Collections, which was introduced at the start of Shadowlands 9.0, and the Mage Tower, which was introduced five years ago. So in true copium fashion, I'm going to push back the goalposts and pose this new question. Do you think we're going to get another small patch to usher in Season 4, like a 9.2.6 maybe? Because WoW has come a long way from having to patch everything in and having 8 hours of downtime every week to where a considerable amount of new content can be like hot fixed in instantly or just require a realm restart. I'll take what I can get, but I don't want the playstyle that I spend most of my time on solo content to be left out. We've in a lot of ways underserved something that may be a, almost a silent majority in our game or a quiet majority, which are people who aren't looking to, you know, top meters and push keys and get their PVP rating up. They just want to explore, do chill stuff and feel at home in the world. And with, while still serving, you know, the core raid dungeon, all the rest, we want to do more for that group in particular in Dragonflight. Being catered to a little bit more is something that I look forward to in Dragonflight, but how about now? I'd like to think that more can be added to the end of Shadowlands to give more opportunities to do once we've raided for the week, once we've did our round of PvP and dungeon stuffs. What about those transmog options, right? How about adding actual gear to Torghast to give some sort of progression for the Jailer's Gauntlet? And this might, this might be even more niche, but how about flying in the Maw and in Corthia? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that or any of the news this week and Anduin survived again. This off. Group right, one gets up the circle. Not yet. All right, go. Group one. Wait, 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 dude. Too many, too many. Oh my god, who yeah. did that? Everybody <laughs> wins. That was way more than group one. <laughs> group. So we're getting there. At least that's what I'm telling myself. We're getting there. We just need the team to. <laughs> We just need the team to not change throughout the night, like just once, and then we'll be okay. Next week is going to be big, I think, between 9.2.5 and also Diablo Immortal releasing worldwide on Thursday. And, and I think the beta version is also coming out on PC that day too. Now I've looked nothing up, apart from the playtest that I did back in 2018 when it was first announced, so I'm definitely gonna give it a shot now that I'm not gonna bust my back trying to play it. I mean, it's also free, so why not? And I'll be streaming it over on our Twitch channel for funsies, so feel free to join me there. And speaking of, let's give thanks to our supporters like the Twitch subscribers for being some great company as always, the few but mighty patrons including newcomer Nicole. Now, 
all of you guys. All of your support keeps this channel going, whether you're pledging your hard-earned dollar dollar bills or by continuing to visit the channel and the stream and everything, as well as liking the video, subscribing, and all that stuff. So I'll see you next time, folks. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. And now you're at the part where you can skip. Five, four, three, one. So when I was in third and fourth grade, I remember taking earthquake drills and my biggest worries were what games were coming out because I got to ask my mom for money and all that stuff uh, and going to Taekwondo lessons because I was like super small for my age. Today's third and fourth graders have to take school shooting drills and, and they're dying and that's not okay. And our leaders, they've got to take some sort of real action or they've got to step aside so some real leaders will. And, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm sorry, like, for those of you who don't like me bringing up the real stuff, I am sorry if it makes you uncomfortable because those kids didn't have a choice either.